You know, we're here today to talk a little bit about prostate cancer and specifically focal therapy and HIFU. HIFU is certainly an important part of our overall prostate cancer program. Mm -hmm. uh, men yeah. that have prostate cancer, as you know, men that have prostate cancer present with a, a variety of symptoms. Sure. They have may have a lot of disease uh, throughout the prostate. They may have just a little bit of disease. Right. And, and I know we provide a full spectrum of therapies, whether it be active surveillance or careful monitoring for both those men that qualify. Correct. On the other end of the spectrum, we, we present or we offer treatments like um, removing the entire prostate, radical prostatectomy. Right. We offer radiation to the prostate. You know, for men that have metastatic disease, we have a full spectrum of trials and standard therapies for systemic treatment. Yep. And then in the middle somewhere or early on, we have, you know, for men that have limited disease to one part of the prostate, and you'll talk more about that. Sure. We offer focal therapy or treating one part of the prostate perhaps uh, as a cure or certainly in, or for several reasons. And um, yeah. so that's referred to as focal therapy or treating just part of the prostate. Yeah. And HIFU, high intensity focused ultrasound, is something you're an expert in. And you've been yeah. doing now for several years. Yeah, we were actually the first hospital in the U.S. to acquire the Focal One machine, yeah. which is the robotic HIFU that was introduced about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So we have done about 100 cases uh, and, and continue to do it. I proctor kind of nationally for other institutions that are kind of learning. And the key to HIFU is really patient selection. Sure. I think that it's right. a great technology, great results in terms of both oncological control, but more importantly, quality of life. Yeah. But it's important that, you know, when you talk to your patients, that you really counsel them on, you know, what A, their goals are, and B, you know, if their prostate and their disease process is amenable to focal therapy, specifically for HIFU. Right. How does HIFU actually actually work? What's the what's the kind of the, just briefly the and yeah, simply yeah, for yeah. even for someone like me, how, right. you know, yeah, you know yeah. what, what's the technology? Like <laughs> what's what's the technology yeah. behind it? How, how well, does it work? Basically, it's using ultrasound. Yeah. And it's focused ultrasound. So the way that I talk to my patients about it is saying, think about the beams of the sun. Uh, a, a prism. A prism or a, a, a um, magnifying, magnifying glass. glass. Yeah, yeah, Thank sure. you. Uh, so, and, and basically honing in on a specific area on a leaf, and yeah, you yeah. burn that area on the leaf. Right. And so the focal one machine or HIFU uh, does that. But right. it, instead of using the rays of the sun, it uses the you know the ultrasound beam. And so we can accurately using real time ultrasound image the the, the prostate, mm -hmm. and then treat the areas that we either know based on their pathology and their biopsy results where we see on their MRI. And what the Focal One machine can do is it can treat just one small point mm -hmm. uh, with you know some margins, or you can treat the entire hemi prostate or half of the prostate gland, or you can even treat the whole gland in certain cases. But I think really the the, the area that Focal One and HIFU is most important for, for patients that have you know, low to intermediate risk disease mm -hmm. that have you know, only as, you know, one or two spots of cancer, and they really don't want to you know, have a more um, quote unquote radical approach to the treatment. Sure. Right. Um, with the understanding that you know, if you're treating only one part of the prostate, then it's possible that there could be cancer else, elsewhere that could eventually, you know, present itself. Yeah. Um, and you know, when you're treating with just a focal approach, there may be some areas that you know the area that you're getting may not be, you know, to effectively reaching. So generally speaking, uh, as you know, um, and so that the audience knows, so yeah. when a gentleman usually gets diagnosed with prostate cancer, it's because the, number one, they typically have an elevated PSA or right. the doctor might feel a nodule or a suspicious area in the prostate, right. and then get an MRI of the prostate, yep. typically in today's world, almost yeah. always. And then they have a biopsy mm -hmm. and the biopsy shows, it's the only way to, the only way to diagnose cancer, of course, is right. to, on the biopsy, the pathologist has to see it under the microscope and then we know that then there's cancer there. Right. We assess the aggressiveness level, something referred to as the Gleason score. Right. And then, depending on those factors, if they have, you're telling me, I think that if they have area, uh, prostate cancer that's limited to one area of the prostate, well, although it could be the entire gland. It could be the entire gland, but really, yeah, I mean, wh when you look at the results in terms of quality of life after the procedure, yeah. and you look at focal treatment versus whole gland treatment, especially in, you know, comparing 
the treatment options like in, a, in the hands of someone like you who's done thousands of prostatectomies that has really good surgical outcomes in terms of quality of life, mm -hmm. then it's kind of even in terms of what kind of quality of life they'll have after full gland ablation versus rapid If you're treating the whole prostate. If you're prostate the whole gland. But when you treat just part of it, and I always say this is analogous to like a lumpectomy for breast cancer. Except right. Because yeah. of the anatomy of where the right. prostate is and deep in the pelvis, you can't just take out part of it. Then you can get excellent quality of life outcomes with, you know, very you know, strong uh, oncological outcomes too in the, in the field of like 80 to 90 percent lack of, you know, disease-free survivorship at five, at five years, depending on how you look at it. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I think it comes down to identifying the right patients, mm -hmm. both in terms of their expectations of outcomes, right. and also in terms of their anatomy and, you know, their disease process. And I think one of the things that we also do, and I think you do the same, is look at the genetics of the tumor, right? Because right? sometimes right. what it appears like under the microscope or their histology is not necessarily congruent with the genes that are actually working uh, within the tumor. And yeah. that gives us yet another you know, uh, right. level of information to say, well, this looks like a lower intermediate risk disease and you know, doing a focal therapy would be appropriate versus, well, this looks actually really high risk and you know, this may be just the, the tip of the iceberg and you know, looking at more of a, uh, a, co a comprehensive uh, hold gland approach might be a better. Right, so if, so if men do um, qualify for mm -hmm. focal therapy, and um, they see you and they elect to proceed with the focal one uh, high food treatment. Yeah. Um, what's number one, uh, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the procedure experience, what happens yeah. in the operating yeah, room yeah, sure. and then what happens afterwards. Definitely. So the procedure is a one-time treatment. Yeah. So there's no multiple sessions unlike radiation or whatnot. There's really no prep other than to they should make sure that the you know the anal canal is clean. So it's similar to when they had their biopsy, right? Mm -hmm. Doing a fleet yeah, cinema. Sure. Right. And I generally put patients on some preventive antibiotics, but there's no cutting, there's no bleeding, there's essentially nothing in terms of invasiveness. The only thing that the patient wakes up with is a catheter, and that's really to protect the urethra because as the prostate cells that are treated, they swell secondary to the heat. This helps protect the urethra and allows the, the patient to urinate well after the procedure. And usually we remove the catheter within three days or yeah. seven days, depending on how much we've treated. I see. But the day of is a, about an hour, hour and a half procedure. The patient is lying on their side. The rectal probe is inserted. I program the, the machine as to kind of where we're going to do the, uh, the treatment. Yeah. And depending on whether or not their MRI or their biopsy slides are helpful to us, we program based on either fusion, where we can fuse the real-time ultrasound with the MRI, yeah. or we just, you know, essentially do kind of a more going based on their biopsy results and doing kind of a regional uh, sure. treatment. And then when they wake up, they have a catheter, they go home the same day, mm -hmm. and they're seen in clinic uh, a few days after to have their catheter removed. Yeah. So there's really no downtime, which is another kind of, you know, right. it's plus, a, it's a big plus, plus sure. right? Absolutely. Other than the anesthesia, there's no need for any sort of post-operative pain medication. The catheter is the most annoying portion of it, but most patients understand that's kind of a necessary evil. Yeah. And that's it. And okay. then our follow-up for the first year is similar to active surveillance, right? So we check quarterly PSAs. Uh -huh. um, at one year, I do an MRI, a repeat MRI on all our patients. Yeah. Um, and then at that point, we decide to do a, a repeat biopsy, more, more so for reassurance that the cancer is gone, yeah. but also to make sure there's nothing that we you know, missed yeah. on the other side. And so now we have close to 100 patients that we've done and, um, you know, the excellence have been as we expected. So about 80% no recurrence And some of these patients we've been following for thir three years or more. And some of the patients that actually had a recurrence have been outside of the area that we've right. treated right. and have opted to undergo another high food, which uh -huh. is possible. Right. There's no... That's a, that's um, a major advantage, I think. Right. Yeah. There's no like maximum amount of radiation that there is with radiation therapy because there's no radiation. It's right. ultrasound. And then we've also had some patients that have opted to undergo other treatments if they've had a recurrence, like getting referred to have a prostate removed. And, you know, basically because it's the surgical planes are, are preserved as a result of the HIFU um, after, you know, several months of getting the treatment or years, then I think that you, you, you'd comment on this since you're the one taking out the prostates. But taking out these prostates after high food tends to be more, uh, uh, more anatomically uh, similar to a, a virgin prostatectomy versus like a radiation salvage prostatectomy. Yeah, so I would agree. So in men that have been treated with 
that there is some change in the tissues mm -hmm. around the prostate when, whenever there's any kind of energy sure. delivered to the prostate. Yeah. Certainly radiation appears to be the worst. So in, in uh, certainly in my practice in men that have had some sort of, of uh, ablative therapy, whether yeah. it be freezing, radiation, HIFU, right. there will be some reaction. Now it's variable and uh, HIFU seems to be the least of all those. Yeah. So there's, so depending on where the treatment was, uh, in other words, anatomically in the prostate where the yeah. treatment was directed that'll affect it but for the but my experience in taking in removing those prostates after a high food procedure has been positive those men routinely recover just as if they really hadn't had any yeah. treatment before the surgery could be a little bit more difficult but their recovery of things like sexual function and bladder control appears to be the same yeah and that's that's kind yeah. of consistent yeah. and that's the other advantage of opting to undergo focal therapy with HIFU right. is that there's really no effect whatsoever on sexual function because we can you know, stay well away from the, the nerves that control erections and there's generally no effect on continence as well. And patients are back to kind of their baseline you know, within a week yeah. after the procedure. Sure. Great. Right.